what's up guys hey welcome back to the difference live it is our last week we are so excited to be back with you guys and uh, man this sunday was awesome do you guys think it was awesome it was, it was so great. It was great i mean it was it was incredible just getting to be back and worship live and in person Brent, what was your favorite part about this Sunday? I know it's hard to I know it's <laughs> hard to pick one thing. If you had to pick one thing. Look, I loved seeing everybody here. Um, although y'all did horrible on not giving me hugs. I'm that just is, I'm just saying. That is true. <laughs> I loved it though. I, mean, I was I'm a hugger, so it's cool. I was kinda in a spot where I was like, I'm not really supposed to hug you, yeah. but <laughs> I, feel like I, I can't everyone. really I was just like I yeah. So it was good. It was good. Uh, yeah, that that's good. What, what what was your favorite part? I would definitely say that I love getting to see everyone. It was so exciting. And man, worship like worship's always great, but it was the just something energy. about coming they, back. It they was, killed it. It was electric. There's no word for the worship or the message. It was all just it was just all around. Yeah, Sunday. no, it was good. It was good. I think that uh, man, I was just just thinking about you know, pastor's message was really timely. Um, I, I thought it was a, it was yeah. really good, um, and man, I am really pumped for this coming Sunday though. Oh yeah, oh, uh, this coming this, Sunday. this coming Sunday is Celebration Sunday. We are celebrating officially being back. We are celebrating 29 years of Pastor and Miss June uh, being here, and and small groups are back. Yeah, That's small exciting. groups are back. So it's we been forever. yeah, I know it has been a while. So we are literally kicking. This is the week we're kicking everything off. And that means next Wednesday night, we're back. So next Wednesday night, we are back and we are kicking it off in grand fashion. Man, we have some new things for you. Um, it's gonna look a little different when you get back because we've been working really hard for you guys to make sure it's the best it can be. And so June 10th, we're starting a brand new series too. We talked a little bit about that last week. That's exciting. And uh, that man, it's gonna be really good. You're not gonna wanna miss June 10th. You're definitely not gonna wanna miss June 7th. We are getting back into the swing of things. And uh, man, I couldn't be more excited. I know this time has been a difficult time, but we are we are thankful that we're walking out of this. Absolutely. And, right. um, you know, you guys know if, you, if you've watched the news or seen anything on social media over the past even over the past months um, the world has just been in straight chaos yeah. um, and uh, from COVID to the unrest and disunity in our world that we've seen over the past few weeks um, man our world really is hurting mm -hmm. right now and, and it's been it's been consumed by fear uh, it's been consumed um, it's been consumed by disunity, by pride, by hate, and, and we've really been struggling as a country specifically, but as a world, we've been hurting too. And so we were, us three, we were actually thinking about what we could do for our last video. And a lot of, really, we were just kind of at a loss for, for what to do. Like, what do we do for our last one? Um, and we thought, what better, what better time to spend some time in prayer? Like what, what better time to, to cry out to God as we get ready to kick things back off? Uh, what, what better way to end everything with asking God to show up and, and praying over peace, praying over hope, and praying over love? Yeah. yeah, you know, like Pastor Jacob said, there's a lot of fear and anxiety going around mm -hmm. right now. And the best thing that we can do is look to Scripture. Because where's, where does Scripture point us? points us directly to God, to Jesus. Yeah. So in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it says, Don't, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, mm. will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Mm. And, uh, you know, right now, Calling out to him is the best thing we can do for mm -hmm. peace. That, Absolutely. When you, when you have that fear and anxiety, the one thing that you you want the most is that peace to come over your your mind, your heart, and your soul. Um, also, in John sixteen thirty three, it says, "I have said these things to you that in me you have you may have peace. Mm -hmm. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I overcome the world. Mm, he overcomes everything. That's so, so good." Yeah. Why don't you guys join me real quick? We're gonna we're gonna say a prayer for peace over our land, over our our people, and over our world. Mm. Lord, we need you now, now more than ever. Yes. Lord, the only way that this gets better is with you, mm. with you at the center, Lord. So we pray for peace over our land, Lord. Mm. 
that you did you bring peace to our country yes in such a time of, tri- of tribulation mm. and lord for our people our people are hurting so bad right now yes. lord there's so much divide in our people right now mm. lord give them peace so that we can think clearly and and live in your your domain yeah. lord and i pray peace over the world lord because this doesn't just affect our country it affects our world lord mm. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. That's good. Um, Also, another thing that we need to pray for, I think, is hope. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's really easy to, like, get down, especially when you see, like, the world, like, the craziness in the world and just all this, maybe, like, darkness in your life, like, whatever's going on. But there's one thing that's for sure, and that God, He is a God of hope, and we Mm -hmm. can go to Him and we can pray for that hope. Um... And whoever is watching this, I know it's easy, like I said, to get down when things start to get crazy or may not seem like things are going great. But I promise you that there is hope in all of this. That's good. Um, And I just want to thank God that we do have that hope. I mean, I'm so thankful for it. And I just, one more thing I do want to pray for is hope. So if you would join me in prayer. Um, God, thank you so much that we just get to come here today and... um, just be sit here in your presence and just feel you right now and god i thank you for the hope that you give us god i pray that if there's anyone out there who feels like or everything's just hopeless god i feel like um who may just think everything's not going good in the world god i pray that you would give them hope god i pray that you would give them peace god i pray that we would just love one another god Lord, in Scripture it says that you should love your neighbor. And God, as Christians, we should love others. And God, I, again, I just pray for this pe- this peace. I pray for this hope. And God, I thank you again for this hope that you give us. God, you're so good, and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and with, uh, you know, with the peace and, and the hope, um, there's, only, there's only one way that we're going to help spread that peace, and we're going to help spread that hope. And that's through love. And, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And, you know, that's a pretty common mm-hmm. common piece of Scripture, but, but I think it's so important for us to understand that the greatest thing that we could do during chaos, the greatest thing that we could do during disunity, the greatest thing that we could do in the face of hate is love. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, and that's a, I think that's a biblical principle. I think that's something that that we need to do. And in John 13, 34, it says a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. And I think, you know, too many times we think it's impossible to love. I mean, I mean, think about it. Uh, you know, some of the, the hate that we are seeing in our world, how do we love those people that give such a hate? Right? I mean, it, it seems almost impossible to love people who hate us. But that's why God has given us his Holy Spirit. That's why he gives us help. He gives us the ability to love others. It's not us because in our nature, we just want to hate people back. But but God is the one who gives us the ability to love others. And it's only with him that we're able to love those um, that are around us. And so we want to we want to spend some time um, praying for uh, love that God will give us the love the, the love for others that he has called us to and uh, Maybe you're out there and you don't feel loved I want to tell you right now that there's a God out there that loves you more than anything There's a God who who says that you have value. There's a God who says you are his creation There is a God who is screaming out your name and he is saying that I love you you. And I want you to know something. Not only does God love you, but we love you. Um, we love you so much. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've posted on social media. We love you. We are always here for you. And uh, if you ever need anything, man, we are here. All three of us, we would love nothing more to, even if you just needed us to sit down and cry with you, like we are here for you and and we do love you. And and we know that we need God now more than ever so that we can show love to the world around us. And so we're going to pray right now for that love. Would you join me? Dear God, I thank you for this time that we have. God, just to, to lift our voices to you. God, I thank you that in the midst of chaos and in the midst of trial, we don't have to wonder where you're at. 
But God, we know that you're there. And God, we know that we have access to you, God. We can come to you in prayer. God, and your word says you'll be faithful to answer us. And so, God, I pray that you would, one, you would hear our prayer right now. You would hear the cry of our land. You would hear the cry of our country. God, you would hear the cry of our people. And, God, you would answer us. God, you've put us exactly where we are, around the people that we're around, so that we can love them and show them your love. And, God, I pray that we would, in the midst of hate, in the midst of division, in the midst of pride, in the midst of fear, God, we would choose love. And God, that we would be a light in this darkness. And God, that that love would expel all hate. God, that our love would be infectious. And God, that we would, God, that through this time, as we walk through it, that we would make it to the other side and we would live in a world filled with love. And so, God, we thank you for the one, the greatest love that you have given us. And thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit so that we are able to love others. And I got, God, I pray for that person that's listening right now that maybe they are struggling to feel loved. God, I pray that you would wrap your loving arms around them right now and they would know that they are loved right now. God, we love you. We praise you and we just ask that you answer us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, and I want to really, as we close, uh, Kenzie, you have a few verses about hope. And I really just want to end with this. And, um, you know, I know Kenzie shared a minute ago, but there is always hope. And I know that there's a lot of you right now. It may seem like the darkest time of your life. It may seem like there is no hope. But I promise you there is hope. His name is Jesus. And he hung and bled and died on a cross for you. But he rose on the third day and he is living in victory. And he wants to give you that same victory. And uh, man, we always have hope. That's a beautiful thing about the life that we live. We always have hope. And we have hope in Jesus. There is hope uh, for unity. There is hope for peace. Uh, there is hope for love. Man, there, there is always hope. And I'm so thankful that we don't live in a world without hope. I can't imagine what it would be like without hope. And so we live in a world with hope. And so I want you to know that there is hope. And Kenzie's going to read a few scriptures about that hope that we have. Yeah, one scripture that I'm going to read is Romans 12, verse 12. It says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. Mm, that's so good. That's also another thing like, be constant in your prayer life. Like mm -hmm. always pray, pray for hope. If you feel hopeless, like I said, just pray for that hope. And another verse that I want to read is Romans 15, 13. It says, may the God of, all, of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may mm -hmm. abound in hope. Man, that's so good. That's so good. And so I want to, I just want to spend the next however long. Let's just close in prayer. Uh, this is how we're going to close out our Difference Live. I uh, mean, I just look back over the last 10 weeks, however long it's been. God's been so good to us uh, that we've been able to keep in contact with you guys, that we've been able to continue to produce you know, material and to continue to talk about God's Word and relevant issues, that, that we still have had the ability to keep going. Yeah. That, that the message of the Gospel hasn't, it hasn't ended. Uh, it hasn't stopped. The, the function of the church, the, the outreach of the church hasn't quit. I mean, we've seen people get saved. We've seen people get baptized. We've, church, we've seen people, people join the church. We've seen, we've seen people step up and give that have never, have never stepped up and give before. They don't even like, aren't even from around That's here. A, I mean, it's just, it, it is amazing that. to see what That's God has done. That's a true testimony to the building is not the church. The people yeah. are the church. Else. That's good. And, and, and I'm thankful that too, that we do have a place where we can meet together and worship because I was reminded on Sunday how important that is yes. as we got back together and we had community with one another. I mean, I don't think what, what time did you leave the church on Sunday? Late, right? I mean, 1230. Yeah. I mean, 1230, one o'clock. I mean, we were hanging yeah, we out, were, yeah. talking to people. We didn't leave until one or one thirty. Yeah. I mean, just. It was so good to be back with people. And I, I realized then, you know, we, we preach it all the time, but we're not created to do life alone. And so I want to encourage you, listen, if, if you are out there and you have never been a part of what we do, and uh, you maybe you've just been watching from the outside, maybe you're in Pensacola and you want to come join us, I want to encourage you to come join us June 10th. Actually, don't even wait for that. June 7th, yeah, this Sunday. Be here for Celebration Sunday. 
And uh, June 10th, man, we have college at 745. We have young adults at 630. It's going to be awesome. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm telling you, being back together, um, fellowshipping with one another, having that community, it is going to be so, so, so sweet. And uh, you're going to miss out if you're not here. Go ahead. One more thing. Go ahead. If you're looking for that love, that hope, that peace, we've got a place for you right here. That's right. It's safe here. That's you right. can come see us. That's right. That's right. And uh, like we said, we love you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. This is a place that you can come and you can be loved. And uh, this is a place where we will welcome you with open arms. And we are here to, to stand with you, whoever you are. And um, we, would love, we would love to have you. And even if you don't come to us physically, maybe you live somewhere else uh we would still love to to be with you pray with you we would still love to uh to do anything we can to help you be what god's called you to be and so with that being said let's i'm going to close this out in prayer and uh we will see you on sunday thanks for joining us dear god i thank you so much for the opportunity to i mean right now as we sit in this room and stare at a phone um, god it's kind of funny that you can use something like this to reach the world. God, you can use something like this to impact hearts. God, you can use something like this. I mean, God, you can use anything. It's just amazing, God, at all that you can do. Yes. And so, God, I ask this. I ask that your hand be on this ministry. God, I ask that your hand be on this church. God, I ask that you would do what only you can do in this place and through these people. God, I pray that we would see Pensacola flipped upside down for you. I pray that we would see Pensacola united more than ever. I pray that we would see Pensacola living out in faith more than ever. God, that Pensacola would be a launching pad to the difference in this world. And God, I just pray that Marcus Point Baptist Church would be a lighthouse in the darkness. And God, that the difference, the college and young adult ministry of this church would stand strong, God, and be, and be, God, be a, a light in this darkness. And God, we just ask that, Lord, as we get back into the swing of things and as we kick things back off, God, that you would be in the midst of this place, God, that you would change lives, that you would mold and shape hearts, and that you would help us to make the difference you've called us to be. God, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.